We're going to go ahead and get started. Today's panelists are Diana Barber and Scott Prouty. Diana serves as Associate Synod Executive for Leadership within the Synod of Lakes and Prairies, and Scott serves as pastor of First Presbyterian Church, uh, excuse me, First Presbyterian Church in Redwood Falls, Minnesota. And we're happy to have Scott and Diana with us today. Welcome. Thanks, Andrew. Good afternoon, everyone. I am Diana Barber. As a Synod staff member, I'm a veteran of many General Assemblies. I've been an observer, a resource coordinator, or committee assistant, and I've served on a task force that reported to the Assembly. But I've never been a commissioner or an advisory delegate who had to report afterwards. So it made sense to me to invite someone who has to join me on this webinar. Scott Prouty was a teaching elder commissioner to the 219th General Assembly in Minneapolis. And as it turns out, has been elected by his Presbytery of Minnesota Valleys to serve as a commissioner again this year. In preparing for this, he's had an opportunity not only to reflect on what he and his fellow commissioners did last time, but also to think about what he might do differently this year. So Scott, we'll walk through the things that may be expected of commissioners and advisory delegates following the assembly in a minute. But first, what would be the most significant learning you've had in thinking back over the last two years following GA 219? Well, Diana, I have a much fuller picture of the Presbyterian Church USA from serving as a commissioner at General Assembly. I have high hopes for the church that although we disagree on issues, we still can come together and continue the ministry that Jesus Christ has called us to do. I do feel much more prepared to go as a commissioner this time around. I have started reading as much material as possible to prepare for my role as a commissioner. Last time I lulled myself into believing I had lots of time to prepare. Then the chair of the committee I served asked me to read a special 900-page document 10 days before I left for the General Assembly meeting to report on to the committee. I am looking forward to GA 220. Wow, 900 pages in 10 days. I'm guessing everybody on this webinar is hoping that won't happen to them. <laughs> but I guess it also means that it's never too soon to start thinking ahead. So let's get started. One of the first things commissioners are usually expected to do following GA is to report to their presbyteries. I expect this would at least include some time on the docket of a stated meeting. But a presbytery may certainly have other expectations that each commissioner will want to find out about from their stated clerk or presbytery staff. Scott, what kind of sharing opportunities did you have last time? Diana, in Minnesota Valley's presbytery, each of the commissioners, alternates, and our YAD presented a report on the floor of presbytery. We also had two question and answer meetings at different locations within our presbytery for anyone who wanted to come. I'm a synod commissioner, so I was also on a panel at the synod meeting, and I reported in my local church at a session meeting and to the whole congregation. I answered lots of individual question, questions from parishioners that I have visited from the congregation I serve. Each commissioner in our YAD also wrote an article for our Presbytery newsletter. I wrote an article on GA for our church newsletter, too. We also offered ourselves as available to come and speak to churches and sessions upon invitations. I know there are always some controversial items that the assembly addresses, and local media might be interested in reporting on beyond repeating an official news release. Do you think commissioners and YADs might be contacted by someone outside the church for an interview when they get back home? I personally did not have this happen, but I was approached by folks in the community where I live from different denominations who liked or didn't like the news stories that the media reported on from the last GA. It may be good to think of your responses ahead of time before answering questions about controversial topics, especially to the press. I would recommend that you talk with the stated clerk of your presbytery and come up with a plan to relay information about hot topics. The press does not always report information correctly, so you want to be sure you give out accurate, up-to-date information. From that experience, Scott, and thinking about what's coming to the Assembly this year, are there groups other than just the Presbytery you think would have a special interest in hearing from commissioners and advisory delegates? It may be helpful if you make yourself available to speak with special interest groups within the church that are affected 
by General Assembly decisions, such as Presbyterian women, advocacy groups, or caucuses. You also could dialogue with ecumenical folks like rabbis in regards to the Middle East proposals. You need to take the initiative to re report beyond the one time on the floor of Presbytery. You will gain unique knowledge and a unique perspective on the church at GA, so don't be afraid to share what you know. Now, back to reporting, are there any suggestions you would make to commissioners about how to make their reports interesting and something presbyters actually would look forward to reading or hearing? I would take pictures while you're in your committee and on the floor of General Assembly to show during your presentation. A picture truly is worth 10,000 words. When I give a Synod Commissioner report to my presbytery, I try to be creative and add lots of humor. Try giving your GA report in the form of a skit or a game show instead of a monologue. Make it something memorable. Present your report with enthusiasm. No one wants to hear a dry report. I challenge you to make it the most interesting report at your presbytery meeting. Having heard some of your reports, Scott, I know they are never dry. I wonder, though, with so many ways an interested Presbyterian can follow the business of the assembly, even watching the whole plenary proceeding streamed live on the internet, what do you think commissioners can share that would be important for people back home to know? Watching General Assembly online is not like being there in person. Every time you turn the corner at GA, you may run into someone you haven't seen in a while. It feels like a giant family reunion. I tell my friends it feels like a taste of heaven going to GA and being surrounded by people who love God and the church. When you are reporting, you can tell people what it is like to be a commissioner or an advisory delegate. The sheer honor of being there. The awesome responsibility you have in making decisions how the process works, and how trustworthy it is. You can describe the moments of grace. You may have times when your mind is made up on a topic, and then the spirit moves over you, and you change your mind. Of course, you'll need to report on the decisions that were made, but you can help folks back home focus on what is really important, and not just what got the most press or made the papers. So I'm thinking that we all need to be looking for ways to communicate beyond making a report to a gathered group. A print or electronic newsletter article, even before a presbytery might meet, seems pretty routine these days, but probably something everyone should plan to do. Have you thought about other more creative ways commissioners could communicate with folks back home? Well, when you are back in your room at night after the meetings, you could use social media, tweet, or blog about what happened during the day. I know some presbyteries have staff at the assembly who will do nightly blogs or web posts giving an update of what happened today from their perspective. So if it is yours, if yours is one, perhaps you could also provide some input into their communication. Of course, all this can happen once we're back home, too. I don't think we have to feel limited to one report on the floor of Presbytery. Now, that sounds like more reason to be in touch with each other and with your Presbyteries in advance to think about all the ways the Presbyteries have to help you share your stories. Now, we know there's a lot more that goes on at the assembly than one person can be personally involved in or follow very carefully, even things that may be of greater personal interest than the committee to which you are assigned. Scott. Where did you find information beyond your committee's printed report about the rest of the GA? Diana, daily newsletters and reports are available from the news service, printed and online. Special interest groups also circulate information, but of course representing their particular perspective. I know last time there were one-page summaries of the big items that were available online after the assembly for including in reports or as bulletin inserts, etc. There are reporters all over the place, but no one can report your experience and perceptions better than you can, and you really don't have to be an expert about everything. Thank goodness. <laughs> That's a good reminder. I know that for every presbytery there will be some hot topics on the General Assembly docket that they are particularly interested in. If a presbytery provides special orientation for its commissioners, as I know some of ours do, 
that may have been shared with commissioners and YADS at that time. If you expect that there will be topics you should be prepared to report on, what advice do you have, Scott, for how to identify those and how to make sure you have good information about what happened at GA, especially if you are not or no one from your delegation is on an assembly committee that was assigned the topic you're interested in? First, do your homework to ask what your presbytery cares about. You may want to ask your stated clerk, executive presbyter, presbytery moderator, or other presbytery leaders. All of the committee members are listed on PC Biz, so you can see if you happen to know anyone serving on a relevant committee to talk to. Check to see if another commissioner or, or YAD from your presbytery is assigned to a particular committee and trust that they will be able to share that story. You should also plan to pay particular attention to the floor debate on that issue and plan to read beyond your committee assignment on topics of presbytery interest if you can. Like I said, you don't have to be an expert on everything, but if you know people are likely to ask you about a particular item, you can try to be prepared to respond. Now, I imagine it would be difficult to report on decisions of the assembly that you didn't personally agree with. How did you all deal with that? What did you do to not take those decisions personally? When you are reporting on the floor of presbytery and you know some controversial topic is a big issue in your presbytery, you will want to play Switzerland. You do not want to report with the we won or we lost attitude. It will only create more division. I would report the facts and use your best poker face. You can also talk about the process, how the committee or the assembly came to their decision. Sometimes it helps people to understand how decisions get made and what a communal effort it is to debate and discern in a group as large as in an assembly committee, much less on the plenary floor. As for taking decisions personally, I don't know that you can really avoid that. But you can take other opportunities to gloat or commiserate with like-minded individuals instead of doing that as part of your reports. Hmm. Sounds like that might also be one more thing to talk over with your fellow commissioners and YADs, to think through how some folks in your presbyteries are likely to respond to certain decisions and be prepared. So Scott, are you thinking now about what you're going to be doing to prepare for your reporting before and even while you're in Pittsburgh? During our presbytery training for General Assembly, commissioners and advisory delegates, we made up a list of the hot topics. Um, I am going to see if we can divide the list up so we don't each have to watch all the hot topics so carefully. I also am going to try to journal each night to write about the highlights, what struck me the most, what enlightened me the most, where did I see God at work? What saddened me? What annoyed me? It's easy to be reminded of the decisions that were made, but I think this will help me remember how I experienced being part of it all at the moment, and not just in retrospect. Well, we know that every presbytery has at least two commissioners and a youth advisory delegate, or could have that many, Scott. Do you have any advice about how they might plan together for life after GA? It is good to remember that you are not alone in reporting the GA news back home. The folks from our presbytery are going to do a conference call when we get back home to plan our report for our August 7th presbytery meeting. We plan on doing everything we did last year and perhaps do our own webinar about the experience. Last year, one of our alternate commissioners had an ice cream social after church and people stayed around and asked questions. What a great idea. Who can turn down ice cream? in the summer. Right, Diana? Absolutely. Isn't If you feed them, they will come one of the great truths. Yeah. Scott, thanks so much for sharing your experience and your plans for your own reporting following General Assembly, and especially for your advice for those who will be commissioners or YADs for the first time. But to help everybody, let's just recap briefly some of that advice. OK, so before you go, Talk together as commissioners and YADs with your stated clerk and or presbytery staff about the presbytery's expectations for your reporting, the hot topics for the presbytery that folks will want to know about, 
how to respond to any requests for interviews from the local press or media, any communicating you intend to do during the assembly, any communicating others from your presbytery intend to do during the assembly, and any role you might have in it. Then pack your camera and journal if you have one. And then while you're at the assembly, take a few minutes each evening to journal or blog or make notes of what happened during the day, what was particularly meaningful or grace-filled for you, so you'll remember it when you get home. Take the pictures others won't, ones that document your experience. And collect information about the work of committees you weren't on and events you didn't get to attend. And finally, when you get back, plan with the rest of your delegation the official reports expected by the Presbytery. Talk about and plan for how you might take the initiative to report beyond the minimum expectations and take advantage of invitations you might get from sessions, special interest groups, etc. Well, Scott, thanks again so much for your input in this webinar today. And friends, we hope that this has helped you who are commissioners and advisory delegates think about how you can prepare to share your experience of General Assembly after, but even during your time in Pittsburgh. With a little anticipation, we hope you will be able to do that effectively and creatively and without having it distract you too much from just immersing yourself in life at General Assembly. We hope to see you there. Diana and Scott, thank you so much for taking the time to share with us um, your thoughts from your experience and things that um, commissioners and advisor delegates should keep in mind during their time and after. And uh, right now I just wanted to highlight a few items about upcoming webinars. Um, first of all, immediately following this webinar, you'll be asked to complete a brief survey asking about your experience of today's webinar. We just encourage you to take a few moments to complete that. This week we have two special language-specific webinars being offered. Uh, the General Assembly Overview, which was our very first webinar, is being offered in both Korean and Spanish. So tomorrow at 1 p.m. is the Korean overview, and Thursday is the Spanish. And so please, um, uh, if you have fellow commissioners, advisor delegates, or any Presbyterians that you think might be interested in learning about the General Assembly and this overview, and that uh, either are primary Korean or Spanish-speaking uh, folks, individuals, Presbyterians, please pass this information on to them. Registration information is available on the General Assembly website under orientation resources and webinars and I uh, appreciate your support in passing that on. Next week our regularly scheduled webinar is on Tuesday, June the 19th at 1 p.m. and Tom Hay will be joining us again to offer an overview on the business that will be coming before the committees at General Assembly. You'll be receiving an email with registration information later this afternoon. And once again, just as a reminder, all webinars are being recorded and are available through the 220th General Assembly website at pcusa.org slash GA220. And you'll just go to the nav bar on the left that says orientation resources and then webinars.